Well, I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled to welcome eight-time Grand Slam champion and US Open legend Jimmy Connors into our Prime Video studio. Jimmy, welcome. You're going to be a member of our commentary team for the men's semi-finals and finals. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Looking forward to it. It's a pleasure to be here today, but uh, the semis and finals, there's nothing better. We've been glorying, Greg, Danielle and I, or the whole team, over this 2018 US Open for the last 10 days. It has been a sensational one, hasn't it? it, it it's exceeded all expectations. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've, I've always said over the years that this is the toughest tennis in town. And, and the reason being is because you really don't know what you're going to get here. You know, you're staying in the city, you got to make the trip out here, or you're going to get caught in traffic. You know, what, then you get the weather. What's the weather going to be like? Here it's been, you know, way hot, you know, and, and, uh, and everybody is, is, is really talking about it. So, you know, even the, the players who are, are in great shape, you know, are, are falling under the heat. And, and it's just, you know, for me to, to come back here, and I come back here year after year and spend a couple days. I love the surprises that I get, not only what's on the court, but also off the court, too. And it's, uh, it's just something that, you know, you just never get enough of. Five titles here between 1974 and 83. Does it still feel like your patch? Well, I left a lot of DNA out there you know, on the courts and, and love doing it. But, uh, you, know, this, you know, my time was here and gone. And, and, but don't, don't get me wrong, I got the most out of that time. And I loved the, the, the playing and, and the tennis was spectacular. But the crowds here at the U.S. Open are beyond anything that I've ever played against. And, but not just for me. You know, they, they want to see the tennis first. You know, it doesn't matter where it comes from or who it comes from. But they want to see the great tennis. And then if they find uh, something they can hold on to, whether it's with Federer or Nadal or Nishikori or Djokovic or whoever, and, and they could get behind them and really root for them, this, this crowd won me more matches than I should have won, and they're begging to do that for some other player, too, and just waiting for it. You talk about that. For me, the best memory of you was 1991, when you were 39 years young, and you had that amazing run to the semifinals. You know, I remember you beating Krikstein, McEnroe, all those guys. Is that one of your fondest memories, or is it when you won all those five titles? Well, I go back to the beginning. The, the, the best memory is always the first memory. Uh, and but. You know, I played for 20 years, and, and to, to get through those 20 years and to save that run and what I got out of that for, for my last run was probably the most special. And the reason I say that is because my whole career, Greg, I tried to get 20,000 people to sound like 60,000 crazy fans. And, and that 11 days, they, they rewarded me with that. You know, whether it was my tennis or whether I was all of a sudden the underdog and they needed somebody to get behind and root for, whatever it was, gave me my, my final. I, I could have walked away right then and been very happy. Yeah, and the other thing is the one line you use, you know, this is what they paid for, this is what they came for, is probably the historic, most amazing line we have in tennis at the U.S. Open. But there's a quirky fact there. I, I, I want to know if this is true. You had two different shoe sizes, one 10, 10 and a half, and you had a company that brought you two shoes that were different, and you changed manufacturers with the shoes because of that. Is that now, true story? Now, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you you know, do it, Jimmy. Now, that's, that's real reporting right there. No, that's that's right. Uh, and, and for, I mean, I had a, I had a problem at the time and uh, with, with my with my one foot and and I needed a little bit more room and, and they and they fixed that up for me and made it possible for me to go out and play but uh, I mean that is some good reporting there. I mean, nobody knows that it's spectacular well, I was playing in the juniors and so for me it's, it's a fond memory to see you there and also to spend time with you and see you because I was lucky enough also to go visit your coach Ponce Segura a few times and obviously your mom Gloria did a great job with you as well so what was the difference there with Poncho and Gloria and how did that work for you well my mom she gave me a everything of course and uh, she gave me my game and uh, taught me my strokes and you know very very compact and you know taught by a woman so I played like a woman and, and I say that with the utmost respect don't don't get me wrong I mean I had very easy and, and very compact strokes uh, but she took me as far as I could go uh, so I needed to get around you know a, a man's attitude and she was great friends with Pancho growing up when they were younger and uh, they ran into each other, and so she shipped me to, uh, to Los Angeles, and, and, and I was lucky enough to get to work under Pancho Segura. But uh, he gave me and taught me not, not only just the tennis part of, of, of the game, but he took the life of the game also, and how to play it and what it meant to go out and, and to, to be in certain situations and, you know, how to embrace the, you know, the pain and, you know, everything you go through to try to win a match. And, 
and and from from that, I mean, you, you can't repay anybody that, Greg. I mean, that is that is you know learning from the master, in my opinion, and and to have been able to spend all those years around him. I, I miss him. I, he just passed away in the last six seven months, and and uh, and. and you know, talking about him and, and what he gave me and, and what he left behind for the game is, is just something spectacular. I'm missing. Jimmy, you were 39 years of age on that run to the semi-finals in 1991. At the time, that felt like the most extraordinary feat that wouldn't be repeated for possibly forever. And now you have Federer. You have, I mean, Nadal's only 32, but the wear and tear on his body kind of feels older. You have Serena and Venus. How surprised are you to see these guys and girls late into their 30s kind of replicating what you did well i i hope they continue to play uh, you know you know age is only a number and and you know times have changed with the way that these guys work out now and they train and their diet and you know, they have every opportunity to be as good if not better than than they really should be you know so take advantage of it you know and, and make it work for you you know serena and, and venus and, and roger you know rafa at 32 uh, i want to give him a few more years still but <laughs> but if these young guys and young ladies, uh, young women aren't stepping up to win, why go away? You know, stay and play. I mean, your legacy will continue on and, and, and what you do even later in your life may be more important than what you did at the beginning and how you handle things and your game and the situations and so forth. So if the youth of today aren't gonna step up and take it away from them, you know, I had to take it away from Laver and Rosewall and Smith and Ash and then Sampras and Courier had to take it away from, you know, me and, and Mac and, and those, everybody has, you know, their place to, to step forward and, and to to earn your place in, in, in the game's history. And if they're not, if these young guys aren't willing to do that, then they should stay and play do, forever. Do I detect a hint of disappointment in this next generation that, that aren't quite pushing through at the top level? No, it's not disappointment. It's not disappointment. It's, you know... And, and you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong here, since you're the undercover detective here. You know? <laughs> that that I think I think at the end of this year, um, all the Grand Slam winners are going to be 30 and over. You know, so which means that there's no Grand Slam champion in the men's that's in their 20s. Now, I don't see that as being right. You know, there's uh, there's way too much talent out there you know, that, that's supposed to step up and start taking their place. You know, I hope they're not just sitting around waiting, you know, for, for Roger to say, oh, well, I've had enough, or Rafa to maybe to get hurt or say, I've had enough, you know, the guys just to go away. You know, their, their legacy would be, I sent Roger packing, or I, I sent Rafa packing, and you know, now it's my turn. Because that, that's where you're gonna make your name and you're gonna be the next star by that, not by letting somebody go away and, and just say, I've had enough. So who do you think is that person that can possibly do that and say, guys, I'm taking this, I'm gonna grasp it. Who do you like the look of the best? Well, I, I saw a match, uh, Rafa, uh, I'm trying to think of his name now, I'm under pressure, so I can't think. Did Rafa play it in the third round? Karen uh, Hatchinov. Yes. The, the Russian guy. Right. Yeah. yeah that, that, that kid played a, a match. Yeah, I hope I, um, I, I don't want to say the match of his life because I'm sure there's much more inside of him for that. But he showed me a game that was just not one dimensional. Yeah. He was able to mix his shots up and do some different things as opposed to just getting in a rhythm and also letting Rafa just get into a rhythm of, of playing against him in one way. Uh, you know, you're waiting for Curio sometime along the line to break loose, you know, but, you know, you know I guess after <laughs> a while. You've been waiting a long well, time. You know, but after a while, you do, I mean, do you give up on him? You know, I, I mean, if he's given up on himself, then you do, you know, but, but you know, he's got too much talent. Yeah. Dimitrov is the same way. Come on, you know, these guys, Zarev, you know, they got, you got too many young guys out there that should be, you know, taking over this yeah. game. And, and, you know, like, I'm not looking to get rid of Roger or Rafa. I mean, their rivalry and what they've done for the game and, and the way, you know, they're, they're moving the game into another level is, is, is unbelievable. But I guess sometimes you got to look at it that, you know, it's time for these young guys to make their own name. But the other, the other thing I wanted to jump in as well is, you know, if in the locker room, if we talked about guys to play for our life, we'd say Jimmy Connors is the man. He's the man to do it. Who do you see in the modern game as that man? If you had to one person well, on the men's I side, pick it. For sure. Uh, you, you know, and, and as we talked about a little bit earlier, Greg, I mean, you know, even if even if I'm in front of the firing squad, at least I got my money's worth. You know, that he's not going to give up on one shot, not one ball. Yeah. And you know he'd be in there digging and fighting and doing whatever it took, you know, because he doesn't look at 
at anything except the win. You know, he knows the value of winning the U.S. Open. With that, comes, uh, uh, not that he's looking for the money, but you know, that, that all is a part of this. It's a big business now. Yeah. So he knows that winning the U.S. Open brings him everything. Yeah. And that's his only thought. But do you, think it's being, do you think it's also being number one or having two majors? So like if you have a year and you finish number one, as you've done on many occasions, would you rather have two slams if you've only got one or be number one if you only could choose one? <laughs> a tricky question Ooh. for you. Well, I mean, you know, number, number one is good uh, if you play like it all year long. Yeah. You know, but, but you know, for me, I mean, I, I, was, uh, I was out to win titles. Yeah. You know, and, and to... You know, and the bigger the title, the you know, the, the more I wanted to win that. But ending up number one meant that I must have done something consistent over the course of that year. You know, not just winning one slam, but maybe winning one slam and nine other tournaments. You know, to, to go along with that, beating the best players along the way. You know, to 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 beat the best. You know, I, I was looking to go play where Borg was playing and Mac was playing and, and Delas was playing and Nastasi was playing and Gerald. I was looking to, to play the tournaments where they were. That was my competition, you know, and I wasn't looking to go play somewhere where they weren't, <laughs> you know. So, you know, to, but to answer your question, you know, now is different. The, the times now, everybody's looking at Grand Slam titles. Yeah. How many you have? In, in, the, in my day when I was growing up, it was every match was the most important because we were fighting for certain headlines in the paper. We were up against Ali, we were up against Wayne Gretzky, we were up against Joe Montana football, we were up against uh, you know, so many great athletes you know, over the, in every other sport that we were trying to grab headlines from them. And to do that, it wasn't just showing up for Wimbledon or the U.S. Open. It was every match that we showed up for was uh, was the most important. Well, that's why I think you have one of the most amazing records in sports, 109 titles. I mean, do you see anybody even coming close to close Well, I to mean, there's, there's a guy close already, you know, and, and uh, you know, but as you say, he's 37. See, to me, 37 is, is if he's in shape and he's still eager and, and, and the distractions off the court don't become overpowering. I think that he still has the opportunity to go and play for another, certainly another year, maybe two, if he wants to, maybe more. You know, but but it's that outside distraction that, that usually comes down and gets you. And and it's being able to separate the, the two. When you're playing tennis, it is hard to do. When you're playing tennis, forget about your family. That's tough to do. But when you're with your family, forget about playing tennis. Now that's just as hard. Yeah. That, that was a very difficult thing. It took me three years after I got married and, and, and we had our son to, to straighten that out for me. These, yeah. these guys, this generation, they've been snapping up records left, right and center, but you still have a few. Those 109 titles, that remains a record. You've got the number of match wins record. Are you protective of those records? Are you keeping an eye on the ones mm -hmm. snapping no, at your No, but I want to answer you this. Whenever there's a, a, a record broken, whose is it? Jimmy Connors. Well, <laughs> then, then, then for me, that, you know, if, if they're chasing what I did and, and, and my accomplishments, then, you know, what else, you know, can I ask for? I mean, if, if, I, if I wanted that to live, would I like, you know, 109 to live forever? Sure. You know, why wouldn't I? I'd be crazy not to, you know, to say differently. But somewhere down the line, you know, whatever the next number of wins is going to be will be broken too. You would think somebody's going to come around, you know, to and do that, but you're not going to do that by only playing 10 years. You know, you've got to have a 20-year career. You know, and and one year a career does not make. You know, it's what you do over the course of your time that you play and the effort that you give every time you walk out there. You know, like I, I look back, I don't have one what if, and 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 I can see Nadal the same way. You know, he's going to walk off there when he's going to go. I couldn't have given any more, done anything more to make me the best player, you know, trained any harder and done everything. I could go with a clear mind and, and enjoy whatever I've done. How rare is that? And Greg, you can probably speak about this as well. I'm sure you see your, your old rivals frequently, for, at least from time to time. How many of them do you think have no regrets? I, I've had to, uh, <laughs> I've had way too much trouble worrying about myself. You know, <laughs> you know, whatever their whatever their thoughts, 
you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the situations with, uh, in which, uh, you know, some of them walked away, some of them stopped playing, you know, injuries might have crept into it, you know, but, but you know, you, you look back because you only have one time, you know, to make that impression, you know, to walk out there every time and give it your all and, and walk off of every match or hopefully every match and say, this was the most fun I've ever had. I've given it everything and I can win or lose walk off there. Now, you know, I walked off a lot of matches and didn't win, you know, and felt just as satisfied, a little more upset, but just as satisfied, you know, with the kind of effort that I gave. So it's all what you're, you're looking for in your own heart and your own mind that, uh, that keeps you satisfied. The other thing I have to ask you, Jimmy, who is your pick for this title at the moment? And the question mark is that long match we saw with team and Adele, will that hurt his title chances? Well, you know, I, I keep looking, at, you know, at his age, first of all, you know, but he's also been through a lot. You know, his style of play and, 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 and his effort is draining. And, but he's also so well conditioned and he prides himself in that. You know, I, I watched him play over the years and he's as into it at four hours and a half and, in, in, you know, in the fifth set as he is in, in the first five or ten minutes of the match. He starts out that way. And, and to, to have that kind of passion and love for the game, you know, and still have the youth or, or, or a little bit of youth on your side, I mean, that's a package that you can't get rid of. You know, you just got to hold on to that and keep doing what you're doing. Now, my pick now, I mean, you, you know, how do you go against the Wimbledon champion, Djokovic? How do you go against Nadal, you know, for, for the way he's played and, and his record? But on the other hand, there's, a, there's this young guy out there. His name is Del Potro. Yeah. And, and uh, I've watched him play because I, I was doing the TV for, for someone else back in the day when he won his U.S. Open title over Federer. And barring injuries, and he's had plenty of them, he should have been up there. He should have been one of the, in my opinion, you know, one of the, the top guys winning the Grand Slams and in the mix with the Federer's, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray, and, 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 the, uh, and, and Warenka. Uh, so, you know, to, to see him play now and the way he's playing and the success that he's had over, over this year is, is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. And it should be exciting for, for guys in tennis, too. Not, not just the, you know, the, the tennis crowd, but people who love to come in and, and see a good comeback. You know, they're looking at Tiger Woods coming back after his back surgeries and everything. I mean, Demontre had the same thing with his wrist year after year. Couldn't get it right. You know, and to see him playing this kind of tennis is a damn good story. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, for him to win here would be uh, off the charts, to be honest with you, because he's got to he's got to beat Djokovic and Nadal. No, uh, he's got to beat Nadal, I think, first. And exactly. Then, and then uh, Djokovic uh, most likely. In the most final. likely. Yeah. So, I mean, but you never know. Because because the interesting you, you thing, the interesting in studio, Danielle has got Nadal. I've got Djokovic, you know, and Del Potro's our wild card because he's only lost one set. So, I mean, this weekend of tennis is going to be blockbusters. And, and he handled the he handled the heat the other day playing Isner. I mean, he, he did he did a good job handling that. Plus, he's a big guy. I mean, you know, he can get by with a lot. You know, where Rafa's and scooting around and, and doing a lot of movement, movement. The Potro could get by with a lot. He's got a big game. He's got a big serve, and and he can do some damage quickly. So it's going to be it's going to be a great weekend, is right. And just finally, Jimmy, what, uh, something that Del Potro does, seeing as you're talking about him so so well, he connects with this crowd, doesn't he? He makes people care, kind of in a way that no one else does. Tell me about connecting with the New York crowd. What it well, is that they see in in him? This, this crowd could win him this tournament. You know, if they get behind him in the right way, which, which I, as I've watched over the course of the, these 10 days, they are. If they really get behind him in a tight situation, they can win him this tournament. If, if, he's, if he's willing to spill his guts like he has been. Yeah, because that's what this crowd wants. Yeah, and, and to connect with them, you know, to, and they, they know his history. They know he won here uh, nine years ago, eight, nine years ago. And they know what he's been through. And, and, and like I said, they like a good story. They like a good comeback of somebody who wants to overcome, you know, something that's, you know, a lot of other guys would have completely walked away from. And, and he certainly is that. Jimmy, it has been an absolute pleasure. We could talk all day long, but you have to save something for commentary. I'll, You're going to be I'll joining us for the men's semifinals and finals, and we absolutely can't wait. Thank you so much for popping in. Great Good thank being you with you. Well. Thank you. It's going to be fantastic. Jimmy, thank you. We'll see you on Friday. The US Open 